Good, good afternoon. Uh, now we consider conduction mechanism in molecules. The today class will focus on uh, mo metal molecule, metal systems, and uh, their modeling from uh, electrical point of view. After that, we try to understand how a basic formula, Landauer formula, can be derived by simple physical uh, ideas. After that, we try to apply the Landauer's formula to uh, this kind of system. After that, we try to introduce, we try to introduce some correction to take into account the effect of charges uh, in molecular orbitals, the getting effects, and uh, at the end, the uh, strategy to apply Landauer formula when uh, the molecule is described by many molecular levels. So, as you know, our reference system is built up by two metal electrodes, uh, generally gold electrodes, and uh, between them we insert by self-assembly generally, by sulfur and thiol uh, binding, uh, a molecule. So what we are interested in to understand is how current, how, how uh, electron flux uh, can be described from the left electrode to the right one. So we try to uh, build, uh, to define a model uh, of the system. So we have two tanks of electrons on the left and on the, side, uh, on the right. So we can uh, imagine that the left tank is the donor or source of the system. In other words, we can imagine that the electron can be uh, originated there. After that, this electron, we, with tunneling generally, can uh, uh, reach molecule. The mo molecule is a bridge and uh, after molecule, electron will uh, uh, be able to reach the second electron tank at, at the right, that is the acceptor or drain. So in this example, uh, we, you can uh, recognize uh, what we studied last class. So we have a conjugated molecule, because you see that the molecule is uh, done by uh, four benzene ring, and so you know that this kind of uh, structure allow a good electrical conductivity because the p orbital of the uh, benzene ring are uh, over overlapping, and so a good molecular orbital for the molecular Y is uh, in the system. So you know also that the molecular and the uh, system can be described by an energetic point of view. On your habit, probably for you it's very simple to describe metals, because metal is described generally by a, a Fermi-Dirac distribution to understand where the electrons are and which uh, levels are occupied. So in this uh, draw, we can, uh, the room temperature, in the metal, the Fermi distribution is uh, l more and more sharp because uh, you know that generally states below the Fermi level, mi1, are uh, occupied and the uh, states up uh, the Fermi level are com completely empty. But this is just to understand what uh, Fermi distribution uh, can say us. This is true for the left electrode and for, for the right electrodes. So, uh, molecule is <coughs> easily described by its uh, molecular level. So we have uh, H level and L level. So you know that the uh, H level is occupied and the L isn't. Uh, the problem arises on the interfaces. Interfaces are a problem. Uh, we know that the sulfur atom uh, can uh, produce good bond to the <coughs> metal, but uh, 
The problem is how the electron can uh, pass through this uh, interface. So we have to understand which is the most uh, effective model for electrons uh, traveling from the metal to the molecule. And the, the same problem is on the right electrodes. So generally, in a starting model for this kind of system, the electrons can be considered, considered uh, as uh, tunneling electrons. So this interface would be, uh, in, in other words, would be described by some tunneling parameters. Uh, after that, we have the molecular wire. Molecular wire can be uh, short, two, three rings, or can be longer. Uh, probably we have to understand which, which kind of mechanism of conduction uh, will be more uh, effective in short and long molecules. Probably when the molecule is long enough, the hopping mechanism is more uh, effective. When the molecule is shorter, probably inside the molecule we have a, a conduction mechanism similar to tunneling. But uh, now we can, uh, uh, we can try to apply some simple ideas to this system. Uh, the ideas are uh, based on uh, uh, two equations. So here we have the Fermi distribution for the electron one, for the electrode one and for the electron two. F1, F2. Each of one is characterized by Fermi level, Mi1 and Mi2, and by the uh, temperature. So this function, as you know, give, give us the probability that one state is occupied. So when I write, I, write, I can write F1 of E, that E means that E is the level is the probability that the state with that energy is occupied. So this is true on the electrode one and on the electrode two. So this is a number. If you know the temperature and the Fermi level, this function gives you a number, and this number can be used to understand how many electrons are in that state. So uh, this is, a, is a, a simple equation, and we, we need another one to describe uh, transport starting from the electrons to the molecule. The idea is quite simple again, because we use a energetic parameters to describe the interaction between uh, metal and molecular level. This parameter is uh, called gamma in, this, in an energy, uh, and we can obtain, starting from gamma, the tau value. Tau is a time, a time, a transit time. In other words, the time required to the electron to travel from the uh, electrons to the molecule. So we can evaluate this time simply uh, doing the ratio between H bar and uh, gamma. So uh, T is a time. Uh, we can use that time to evaluate a flux. A flux can be, in this case, uh, described uh, by using four different symbols. So you see that on the left you have a, a flux uh, from the electrode one to the molecule, and the symbol is phi x1 to m, and we have also an opposite flux from the molecule to the electrode. And so the symbol is obviously uh, from molecule to one. Uh, the same thing can be done on the right electrode. So we have two possible fluxes from the electrode to, to the molecule, phi x to m, and uh, a flux from the molecule to the electrodes. So the molecule is described simply by its uh, molecular level. 
So we have uh, H level, yeah, H minus 1, minus 2. Uh, these levels are completely occupied. And we have L level, yeah, that is most relevant for the conduction, as you know, uh, that is completely empty in this uh, uh, static condition. Uh, on this reference scheme, we can define also currents. So we have currents uh, I1. This current uh, describes the total current uh, flowing between the molecule and the electrode 1 in, at this ester interface. And uh, I2 is described, uh, again, as a, the total current flowing uh, through the interface from molecule to electrode 2. Uh, to apply the uh, common uh, current direction, uh, since the electrode 2 is uh, the drain, we prefer to describe a positive current I with this direction. In other words, I1 will be positive uh, for this device. I2 will be negative because, as I said, we prefer to use traditional uh, current uh, convention. So the current is positive flowing, flowing from electrode 2 toward the electrode 1. Okay, so this is the system and this and that are the quantity that we want to uh, define. So, uh, we try to write simple equation to uh, evaluate the four fluxes. So, uh, a flux is a density time dot a velocity. A velocity can be, again, C has... Uh, one over a time. So we can use a very simple expression to evaluate the, fir the first flux simply by evaluating the density, the number of electrons at the energy E, and this quantity can be divided by the time required to uh, cross the interface. So the first flux will be simply 2F1 over uh, dot gamma 1 over h bar. In the same way, the 2 is related, obviously, to the possible spin of the electron in the state. So we are considering just one level. So for that level, we have just one possible state. That state can uh, be uh, occupied by two electrons at the maximum, and so this is the uh, reason of the 2. 2 F1 dot gamma over H. So uh, the first expression, this one, is related to the number of electrons for unit of area for time, a flux, obviously, uh, for the electron traveling from the electron 1 to the molecule. Now we can do the same for the flux of the electron traveling from the molecule to the electrodes. And uh, the expression is similar, is this one, from molecule to electrode 1. So we have N. So N is unknown now, but we can use it to define this possible flux because we say if we know N, we can evaluate flux, and the flux again is N over time, but time is gamma 1 over H bar. So when the system is at equilibrium, the two fluxes are the same. So we can uh, uh, equal this expression to the second one. So the last expression is just the balance of the two fluxes. The flux from the electrode to the metal is balanced exactly by the flux from the molecule to the electrodes. Uh, this last expression allows us to write uh, a, simple, a simple expression for the current uh, I1. So uh, this current can be derived directly 
from the fluxes. So probably it's better to reconsider the scheme. Current I1, this direction, will be uh, positive when you have a flux of electrons traveling in the opposite direction. So the sign is related to the flux from electrode one to the metal. So when you are at the equilibrium, these two fluxes are exactly the same, so the current is zero. But if you have this flux larger than the flux from a molecule to electrode one, the current will be positive. So what we can write is exactly what I said. So we have this is the term related to the flux of the electron from the electrode to the molecule minus gamma 1 over h bar n, that is the flux traveling from the molecule to the electrode. So you know that a current can be directly obtained as a flux dot charge. So Q dot this quantity will be the current E1. It's clear for us that I1 is zero when the system is at the equilibrium because I said and we know that the two fluxes are exactly the same. We can do the same analysis on the second electrode. So the second electrode has a flux from the electrode to, to the molecule, this expression. The only change is the uh, two instead of one, but it's exactly the same. And again, we have a flux from the molecule to the electrode two, that is n, if we know that, uh, dot gamma two over h bar. Again, these two fluxes at the equilibrium should be, must be exactly the same, and the current uh, crossing the interface between molecule and electrodes on the right is, is described by this simple expression. Uh, now we are interested, obviously, to understand what can happen when an external voltage is applied. So the idea is to apply, a, to bias uh, this system by using again an external <coughs> voltage generator, VA, uh, positive on the right, as usual, and now we try to understand what kind of uh, phenomena uh, are uh, generated by the external bias. You know generally that when you uh, apply a positive voltage to a metal, all the energy band diagram is uh, shift down by a quantity equal to the energy associated to Q dot uh, VA. So what we can say is the difference between the Fermi level in a left electrode and the Fermi level in the second one should be exactly equal to VA as energy, so in electron volt. Uh, now we can do some preliminary uh, <coughs> analysis. What we have is the uh, LUMO level. LUMO level is uh, uh, this one. So uh, I try to put this level in this position. Uh, on, on the position of molecular level, we have to do some uh, more uh, consideration. But now, as hypothesis, we can understand that this can be a good position because uh, the electron can flow from the electrode one to the L level in the molecule, and from the L level in the molecule can reach the uh, drain, uh, the second electron on the right. So uh, I try to uh, summarize this condition uh, in this way. The two fluxes red in the scheme are obviously the, the fluxes that uh, will dominate the current in the wall system. So, sorry. <coughs> the red fluxes are dominant to understand which is the total amount of current flowing from the electrode one 
to be electrode 2. So, uh, the idea is probably this flux is not uh, zero because you know that uh, statistically some electron will uh, pass from the molecule to electrode 1 and from the electrode 2 to molecule, but uh, the balance now is not zero because the balance now is dominated by these two uh, contributes. So what we can do is to write e an equation where the sum of the currents, if you remember as we wrote currents, we can say that the device is a node from the electrical point of view, so I1 plus I2 should be equal to zero. From this equation, uh, by using the expression for I1 and I2, we can do a very simple system and we can obtain an expression for N. N, as I said, is unknown till now because N is the number of electrons on the molecular orbital. So this expression allows us to evaluate the number of electrons that are in uh, that uh, orbital in that uh, structure. So, uh, now we can substitute N or in I1 or in I2, it's the same, and we, get, uh, and we can get this expression. This expression is very uh, common and is used in many fields of nanotechnology and is called the Landauer formula. This is a formula that can be applied as we uh, get it, uh, only for one energetic level. Because if you uh, try to analyze this expression, all the quantity are constant, two Q gamma parameters, uh, but also these two numbers are constant. Because, as you see, the energy E is a well-specified energy, is the molecular level used to evaluate current. So uh, the problem is if you know exactly the value of the molecular level E, you can estimate current simply by evaluating Fermi distribution F1, F2 for this uh, energy. This is a constant and we can get uh, the current. Probably is too easy probably is not enough to obtain a good result. But now we can try to understand just a little better how we can apply this formula. Uh, to do that, uh, we can consider these two cases. These two cases can help us to be more confident with that equation. So we can imagine two different conditions. On the left, we have a condition where the molecular level uh, e is there. That means that the function, the Fermi uh, distribution, both on left and on right, uh, are inside the metal, below the Fermi level. What we said at the beginning is that the Fermi function below the Fermi level is approximately 1. So, if we try to evaluate F1, F2 for this value of energy, we will obtain one on the left for F1 and one on the right for F2. But if I try to substitute in Landauer formula one and one, what we discover is the current is zero. So this formula say, say us that when the molecular level is in a condition like this, current cannot flow, or better, the total current is exactly zero. Uh, on the right, we have the opposite condition. Now the molecular level is here, up above the uh, Fermi level of the metal electrodes. And uh, again, you know that the Fermi distribution, just few milli electron volt uh, above the Fermi level is zero at room temperature. So again, F1 of E on the left, F1 of E on the right, will be exactly zero. 
So zero minus zero, again, the current should be null. So uh, these are two uh, opposite conditions, but probably are two conditions that we will uh, reach when we try to understand how a molecule will conduct when we try to apply an increase in voltage on the drain with respect to the source. So uh, this is a simple plot by using uh, the Landauer formula. Uh, we optimize parameter for a T of N, but this is not relevant now. Uh, now we have two values for gamma 1 and gamma 2, uh, gamma, gamma two equal to 1.6 electron volt. And we fix the molecular level uh, minus 1.47. That means that the level of the molecule is one and a half electron volt below the Fermi level on the uh, left electrodes. So the idea is quite simple. Now we can try to uh, analyze what I said. So uh, in the system... The electrode one is considered as a reference. So the Fermi level here uh, can be used as a reference point. Uh, the molecule is simply described by one uh, level. And this level is one. No more. Lumo level, and this quantity, since this is zero, is minus 0.47 electron volt. Uh, that value will be maintained constant. So this is an approximation, but now we are trying to build, to define a simple reference model to evaluate conduction in molecular devices. So uh, what we have is when the system is at the equilibrium, apply voltage equal to zero, the system probably has a this is VA equal to zero. Uh, the system will be is described by this condition. Uh, now, for you, it's uh, evident that the current uh, uh, will be zero because uh, the function uh, distribution here, as you know, we can try to draw. You know that uh, the function distribution is zero because uh, one, zero. Uh, the same here. So this is Fermi level me too. And what we have is again uh, a condition like zero is very sharp one. So uh, we consider just one molecular level E, and the position is this one. So it's clear that the value for F1 of uh, uh, E is 1, and also here the value for F2 of the level E is 1. So the Landauer formula tells us that uh, uh, the current is zero. Now we can try to bias the system. As I said, the molecular level is an approximation. The molecular level is uh, kept at this position, and we try to maintain that. Uh, and we can imagine which kind of IV curve can be 
obtained. So uh, when the level of second electrode or the right electrode is uh, pulled uh, down, probably the, cur the current will be zero till the level Mi2 will reach the position of the molecular level. So, uh, and the current will be different, uh, will be, in, will be uh, greater and greater when the molecular level will be there. So we can try to redraw this scheme just modifying the electrode on the right. So now the voltage should be approximately 1.5 volt, for instance. Uh, what we said is the uh, Fermi level of the uh, right electrode will be here, just below. Me too. So we can uh, redraw the electrodes. Electrode here. So now uh, we have to translate also this one. So I can do that. So. So uh, now we have to evaluate the value, this is, will be F2 of the molecular level uh, E. So it's clear that we have a threshold uh, quite uh, uh, when VA approximately 1, 4, 1, 5 volts. So, uh, the current will be zero on the left of this threshold. And probably when the uh, right electrode is below the Fermi level, the quantity of, cor of current will increase quite But it's also clear that when you try to increase again voltage, uh, this Fermi function uh, will be quickly zero. And less than zero no, is not possible. So what we can understand is that very, in a very short uh, uh, range of voltages, the current will saturate to a maximum value, like this. So this could be probably what we can obtain by applying in a very simple way the Landauer equation to this system. Uh, now we can check uh, uh, this idea uh, considering uh, what I said. So, uh, the uh, molecule, the 2TT, is the blue one, and you see quite well that what we uh, discussed just before. The current is the blue curve, the current is zero, 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 but uh, in the range of starting from 1.4 volt, uh, quite quickly, uh, it saturates to a maximum value. So, uh, Landauer formula can apply very easily, but uh, our, we are wondering on the quality of this result. And probably uh, you can uh, imagine that the quality of this result is not satisfying, because if you try to compare this uh, uh, IVU current curve with the curve that you can get with a 
simulator, like virtual nanolab, BNL simulator, uh, the car are completely different. So probably uh, your impression is Landauer formula cannot apply to uh, derive even if uh, we are satisfied by approximated uh, uh, expression, but we cannot use that formula uh, as we do in uh, uh, electronics uh, to uh, derive good uh, model because it's completely out of our uh, aim. Now we try to understand why uh, Landauer formula in that form doesn't work. And the problem is due to the interaction between uh, molecular level and electrodes. So our idea is, till now, that the molecular level is just, is just one uh, level. But uh, generally, the interaction between molecular level and electrodes produce a broadening of the level itself. In other words, uh, we have uh, this molecular level and on the interface between metal and uh, uh, molecule, this molecular level is, uh, interacts with metal and we have a broader uh, distribution for that uh, level. So you have a distribution, the function of energy, for a specific uh, molecular level, E. So generally is used in, the, uh, in this kind of uh, uh, correction of Landauer formula, a Lorentzian distribution. So you have a distribution that you can write in this way, is quite similar in shape with a Gaussian one, but uh, uh, the expression is simpler. So you have uh, the energy, E, but this is the level, E again, uh, and we can try to understand if a correction in Landauer formula, taking into account the uh, broadening of molecular level when the metal uh, interact with the molecule can get us better result. So uh, the idea is quite simple. Uh, it's clear that now we have to consider many contributes to the current, each for any energy uh, in, uh, involved in the uh, transmission of electron. So, you see that this one is the uh, original part uh, of Landauer formula. Uh, we introduce the density of, uh, uh, of states uh, derived by broadening of the molecular level and try to integrate this uh, expression starting uh, on all the uh, possible, en possible energies. Uh, it's possible also to rewrite this integral by defining the transmission probability as uh, t has 2 pi uh, d of e and so on. So the expression now is quite simple, formally. Uh, the, the current i is equal to 2q over q uh, integral of transmission probability multiplied by the difference of the function, Fermi function, in the two electrodes in the range of energy involved by molecular orbital. Uh, to understand how we can apply this formula, could be interesting to do this kind of uh, exercise. It's just an exercise, but can be uh, useful for us to understand how we can apply uh, Landauer formula with broadening. So we can imagine that the system is uh, at low temperature. When the temperature is low, uh, what we said on Fermi distribution is completely true. So uh, the uh, F1 and F2 are uh, exactly equal to 1. Since uh, on the left electrode, uh, F1 is 1, and on the right electrode, 
f2 of e is 2, is 0, sorry. So the difference is exactly, exactly equal to 1. So uh, the integral now can be evaluated starting from mi2, the Fermi level on the right electrodes, to mi1, that is the Fermi level in the source electrode, on the left electrode. Uh, in that interval, at low temperature, the F1 minus F2 is equal to 1. So what in the integral uh, can, must be evaluated is just tra the transmission, the transmission probability uh, between mi2 and mi1. But we know that the difference between the two Fermi level is exactly equal to the external voltage applied to the system. So what we can do is to consider the uh, average value of the transmission probability at the energy E prime, and we can uh, rewrite in approximated uh, form the integral in this way, 2Q square over H VA T evaluated in a medium point as average. So uh, sorry, this term should be omitted obviously. Uh, now we can do a very simple approximation. We can say we have a system wh where the uh, transmission probability from the electrodes to the uh, conductive level is 1. If you try to do that, you get uh, a very common expression called G0, that is 2Q square over H. That is uh, a quantity that you can measure when you try to uh, characterize by electric point of view a single conductive channel in nano, uh, in nano systems. Uh, this channel can be simply a uh, wire built up by uh, one atom each, uh, or few atoms, uh, one uh, after one. But now we have to reconsider our system. So the idea that we developed just before to uh, obtain the value of G0 can be applied to the uh, Landauer formula with, with broadening. So we can say, uh, since the Fermi function also at room temperature are not so different for, from the uh, Fermi distribution at low temperature, we can uh, apply this approximation. In other words, we can say again that the difference between F1 and F2 for energy between the two values of the Fermi on the left and on the right uh, electrode is equal to 1. And only there, outside this interval, that uh, formula, uh, that difference is equal to 0. Uh, because you know that the out of this interval, uh, the two Fermi function will be or both 1 or both 0. So, we can transform our integral. So uh, probably it's better to re review uh, the starting point. So this is our expression. Now we can substitute for uh, density distribution uh, with broadening this expression, but this term can be approximated to 1. So what we get is simply this one. So here you have uh, the integral now must be evaluated only starting from mi2 to mi1. Uh, this is a, qu a constant quantity. It can be uh, on the left of the integral. Uh, and inside the integral, you have only the uh, state distribution in this form. So what we can do now is to uh, integrate this expression 
by, doing, by changing E with X uh, as E minus uh, the ener energy level considered for the molecule, this integral can be solved and we can uh, obtain a closed form like this. Uh, again, we can try to draw this expression. Again, this expression is uh, enough simple to be uh, used uh, with uh, pencil and paper. So we can try to understand how this expression works. So this is constant. Uh, m mi1 is constant. This is the energy level of the molecule is constant. Gamma is broadening and uh, should be evaluated or uh, in some way defined. So the voltage, where is the voltage in this expression? So my question is how I can draw current as function of the voltage? The answer is me too. Me too is function of the external voltage. When you try to apply a voltage, you can consider a different value for me too because the only quantity that is modified by the external bias is the Fermi level in the electrode 2. So this would be function of the applied voltage. And I can, I can draw this expression simply uh, modify the value of me too considering the external bias. What we can get now is a, a I V uh, curve uh, very near, very uh, close to the uh, VNL result. This is a, 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 good, a good result. Uh, it's not perfect, but now uh, you can recognize uh, the uh, behavior of the curve. It's completely different from the expression and from the uh, curve that we get uh, considering uh, Landauer formula without uh, level broadening. Because if you remember, what we get is a very completely different shape. What is important, uh, now we have not enough time, that this kind of result uh, give us good result also for different molecules because we can get similar results for longer molecules for ATT but also for uh, other uh, different kind of conjugated molecules. So this is a, is a good result and uh, uh, can allow us to define a simple expression to describe uh, molecular electron devices in terms of uh, uh, current voltage characteristics. Uh, the problem is the result is not perfect. Uh, we have to fix uh, all these parameters because we have to fix gamma 1, gamma 2 for interfaces. We have to fix uh, to understand the rate, right value for gamma to take into account the broadening. But if we try to do our best, the result is not uh, perfect. And probably for us it could be interesting to understand which are the causes of this, uh, uh, of this problem. Uh, the problem is charging effort. Charging effort is uh, uh, an important uh, mechanism in uh, nanosystem, in molecular system, uh, that is not so relevant uh, in uh, system, larger system. Uh, in uh, uh, traditional electronic, generally, this kind of effect is not, uh, uh, is not uh, possible to be uh, measured. But in uh, nanosystem, in molecular system, the charging effect can be uh, relevant to the IV characteristics. So uh, now we can try to understand which kind of uh, uh, problem uh, we neglected when we consider the position of the 
uh, molecular level at a uh, constant level. Uh, if you remember for T of N, we used minus 1.47 electron volt. So no, the system is this one. The idea is to put the molecular level at this uh, point, and after that we try to consider how the electron flow from the electrode 1 to the le molecular level, from molecular level to electrode 2. Uh, all it's okay, but uh, now we can recognize uh, an important uh, uh, phenomenon. The phenomenon is when you move an electron from the electrode to the molecule, the quantity of charge in the molecule is uh, changed, but uh, is changed in terms of uh, uh, significant effect because uh, uh, this electron can modify the energy of the level, the potential energy of the molecule, of the channel, and what we have is this level, when you have one electron traveling uh, along the molecule, this electron contributes to the energy of the molecule itself. In other words, the level will be uh, translate, will translate from this position to this one. But it's clear for you that the position of the level is this one, the current is completely different. But if the current is completely different, probably the number of electrons on that level will be different. So uh, what we have to do is to consider a closed system where we have to consider current. From the current, we can understand and we can evaluate the uh, average number of electrons on the molecule. That number modifies the energy of the molecule and so on. So uh, the problem that we have with molecular system uh, like that is to uh, consider also the effect of the charge, charges uh, traveling on the system. Uh, how we can do that? It's not easy, and we cannot do uh, that with uh, simple formula. So probably for uh, a simple description of molecular electron devices, uh, we cannot do, but the idea is uh, uh, this one. We have to satisfy uh, this kind of uh, uh, equation. So this is the equation that we uh, derived for the number of electrons on the molecular level. Uh, this number depends only on the value of uh, molecular level. In this case, we call this EI. Uh, this number, N, can be considered to evaluate the energy of the, uh, due to the addictive or subtractive number of electrons on the molecular level. So we have to evaluate the difference between N and the value at the equilibrium, and starting from that, we can evaluate the value of potential energy for the molecular level. So, in this way, we can update the value of the EI, in EI plus one, and so on. So the system must uh, consider in a closed form this equation. Generally, this kind of uh, uh, algorithm of procedure is done by simulator, but uh, obviously for us it's very difficult to implement it uh, by a simple closed form model. So uh, what I can say if we need to manage a simple equation to describe molecular devices is to uh, use a, a approximated value for the molecular level and uh, we have to accept some uh, errors deriving from this approximation. But it's not possible to implement closed form equation taking into account charging effect. Charging effect is important because in the next uh, classes, uh, 
you will see how a uh, molecular system can be described also in terms of uh, uh, Coulomb blockade, uh, because this is a typical effect uh, that modify uh, the uh, IV curves in uh, uh, nanosystem. Uh, the question general is, but uh, on a molecular device like uh, what we, uh, that we studied now, uh, Coulomb blockade can be observed, uh, the answer is depend on the interfaces. So if you have uh, good interfaces in terms of charge transfer, generally it's very difficult to measure Coulomb blockade. Uh, column blockade can be uh, very uh, easily observed only when the interface uh, have a bad transport. So if the tunneling between uh, metal and molecule is not so good, in that cases you can observe uh, Coulomb blockade. In other words, if you are building, you are, if you are implementing a molecular device to uh, transport electrons in efficient way, generally that kind of device uh, is not affected by Coulomb blockade. If you want Coulomb blockade, you have to make the interface uh, less efficient. So the tunneling should be less efficient between electrodes and molecules. In that case, you can observe very well uh, Coulomb blockade. Uh, now, we can consider also gating. Uh, we know that uh, molecular wires can also be used to uh, realize, to implement uh, molecular field effect transistor. Uh, it's also clear that you need a third electrode to control current. The idea is generally is uh, what you see on this uh, slide. So, this is our bridge, molecular bridge, the two electrodes, source, drain. Here you have a very thin layer of insulating material, dielectric. Uh, below, you can put another uh, electrode. So you can apply an external voltage to modify or to uh, apply an electric field, a vertical electric field, to the molecule. So, uh, what can be interesting is, which is the effect of this uh, uh, external field. We can consider a condition not uh, uh, completely different from that we consider for charging effect. Because uh, on the left we have a system, this one, where the le molecule level L level is here, uh, could be. Uh, it's clear that when you have a gate voltage equal to zero, the position is this one. Uh, it's clear that the current in this system will be zero. Will be zero because the function, the Fermi function, will be zero both on the left and on the right, the difference is zero, but it's clear also from a physical point of view because electrons here, uh, are, uh, there are not electrons, so the flux uh, is impossible. Now we try to apply a potential here, for instance a potential uh, of one volt, and you know that this potential push down all the levels of the molecule below. So what we can observe is the external uh, gate voltage will uh, push all the levels of the molecule level below. But if the voltage is large enough to put the L level in this position, it's clear for all of us that the current now can flow and you have a large amount of current flowing from the electrode 1 to the electrode 2. So uh, the effect is to control the current from 1 to 2 simply by moving, by uh, translating the energy levels of uh, the molecule between uh, the electrodes. Uh, this is an idea 
but it's not a good idea because uh, uh, in the next classes you will consider some uh, uh, result, uh, experimental result obtained in this direction. And what is clear is that this is a good idea to uh, measure and uh, to understand this kind of phenomena, but it's not a good idea to design and to uh, realize molecular devices. Because uh, uh, in this condition, if you imagine how you can uh, uh, realize this system, probably uh, all the advantages of uh, molecular technology uh, are lost. Uh, because, again, you have to realize a, a well-defined uh, dielectric, very thin, because the, uh, the maximum thickness of this uh, dielectric probably should be less than one nanometer. Uh, if the dielectric is thicker, the quantity, the, the electric field, is not enough to modify the molecular level. So, uh, in this way, all the advantages of molecular electronics, self-assembly and so on, are lost. So it's not a good idea, in my opinion, to uh, define uh, for molecular device structure like this. But the idea could be interesting because uh, probably we can implement other structure where the effect of the electric field can be measured only as a measure of the current between uh, two metal electrodes on a molecular wire. So, the last thing of, uh, is multi-level system. Uh, it's clear that molecules generally are not defined by only by one uh, L level. Uh, we know that generally uh, molecule can uh, uh, be described by more than one. Uh, so here you see that many LUMO level are in the molecule. So you see that here you have the first one, another one, another one. Uh, what is this uh, uh, curve? This curve is the transmission spectrum uh, for a molecule interface, metal molecule interface. And so you see that the broadening, the broadening appear, uh, appears uh, on different levels. So this is a conductive level. You have another one, another one, increasing the energy. But each uh, level will be larger than uh, uh, a simple uh, level like we have in uh, insulated molecules and are uh, composed in this way. So the Landauer formula can be uh, extended also to this case because in general it's quite easy to understand if you have more than one molecular level you have to consider the sum of the contribution of uh, uh, level one, level two and so on. So more level you have, more current you can transport from source to drain. Depend on the position of the level with respect to the Fermi level in the metal electrode. This is clear because the, uh, the exercise that we did just before can be uh, applied to a system where the uh, level are more than one. But the idea is exactly the same. So the integral must consider more than one level, and so the current probably depends on the position of the level with respect to the Fermi level in two metal electrodes. Uh, but the Landauer formula can be obviously extended because uh, we can consider a more complex uh, transmission spectrum in the formula that we derived just a uh, few slides before. In other words, we can use uh, this formula. In this formula, we can substitute this transmission uh, with a transmission that contains more than one level. And the integral can evaluate the total current, uh, obviously, uh, knowing how the uh, spectrum is
Okay. Uh, in order to uh, summarize what we try to understand today, we can uh, consider this simple scheme. So, uh, when we want to design to understand how a uh, molecular electron device works, obviously the reference equation is Landauer formula because it's a, uh, it's a good compromise uh, between simplicity and uh, uh, reliability uh, in terms of result. Landauer formula must be uh, used if you know molecular levels. Molecular levels uh, depend on the molecule that you are using between electrodes. So from the analysis that we are able to do, we can define the energy levels, the energy band diagram, like uh, as in semiconductor, if you know homo, lumo, lumo plus one, plus two, and so on. Obviously, uh, these levels are affected by uh, different phenomena that doesn't depend directly by the molecule, because you know that the uh, molecule uh, charges uh, must be evaluated as function of the applied uh, voltages. So this level should be corrected by uh, effect of uh, charges on molecule. And obviously also the gating has a similar effect. So charges and gating can be, in other words, uh, described in very similar way uh, simply by modifying the position of conductive channel uh, in the molecule. Landauer formula requires also that you have uh, uh, the binding with electrodes, and the binding with electrodes is described by gamma 1, gamma 2 parameter and by level broadening. So all these parameters can be approximated and can be uh, used to evaluate the current voltage curves with a good approximation. Obviously, the most critical part should be this one. Uh, for uh, an approximation of uh, this equation, for us it's very difficult to derive a closed form for the effect of charges on molecule. Uh, generally, what we can do is to uh, put the energy levels, the position of the energy levels, to an average position to get a good uh, uh, result, but uh, cannot be exactly defined uh, only with uh, uh, an approximated uh, system. Obviously, if you need a more accurate, more accurate result, uh, a simulator must be used. Okay, thank you.